Let's say that you want to start a new Indian restaurant in London. And because you think that it's going to make a lot of money, you're excited about it. However, your rational mind tells you to do a quick investment analysis to see if you can get your money back or not. And this is where the payback period comes into picture. It is very useful. And when used along with tools like the NPV and IRR, the payback period can help you figure out how long it will take to get back your investments. Hi all, my name is Dheeraj from wallstreetmojo.com and in today's video, we'll learn all about payback period, how it works, its calculations, uses, as well as limitations. So let's get started. Let us now understand what is payback period or how do you define payback period. Payback period is nothing but a time period uh, which you might take to recover your initial investment. Okay, so what do you mean by this? Let's say you invest in a project and how much time you take to recover that, you know, so in a project when you invest, you will expecting certain cash inflows, right? So how much time those cash inflows will cumulative be equal to your initial investment that will be called as a payback period. Let's understand this whole concept with the help of a simple example. Let's say you have project A and this project A has certain cash flows. Okay, so uh, when you talk about project, there will be, you know, uh, something like year zero where you, know, you are expected to make initial investments, then year one, year two, year three, year four onwards, you will get cash inflows, right? So I'll just put those year zero, year one, so on and so forth like that in the form of a table. Okay. So year two, year three, and year four. Okay. So let's assume that there's a very simple project, project A, which requires an initial investment of say $1,200. And uh, you get uh, cash inflows from this project to the tune of let's say $400 each. Okay. So what we are assuming here is that all of these cash inflows are equal. Okay. So equal cash inflows each year. Okay. So that's, that's the assumption that we have made. If this is true, the formula for payback period is very simple. The formula for payback period will be how much is your initial amount that is 1200 divided by your annual cash inflows. And how much is that? And that is 400 in this case. So this comes out to be three years. Okay. So as you can see, you know, this is kind of very simple example and uh, you can easily do the maths uh, using this visual, right? 1200 is the cash outflow. So 400 you recouped in the first year, second year, and third year, and this will be your payback period, three years, right? So that's how you calculate your payback period. Let's assume that this was 300. Okay. So instead of 400, this was 300 each year. Okay. So let me do that. So how much will be the payback period in this case? So if it is 300, 300, 300, 300, it will take four years to recover the original investment, right? So instead of three years, 400, I'll put 300 and this will lead to four years. Correct. Now let's assume that this is 500 each year. Okay. So what will be the answer? So instead of 300, I'll put 500 here and we get the answer as 2.4 years. Okay. So in the first two years, you will recover your first $1,000 and the remaining $200 will get recovered in another 0.4 years. Okay. So calculation of payback period with equal cash inflows each year, like $500 each was fairly simple process. But how about unequal cash flows? What, what will be the formula in that case? Okay, so let's understand how to go about calculating payback period for unequal cash flows. So let me just copy and paste this and create a project B, okay, with unequal cash flows. What do you mean by that? It will be different for each year. Let's say $400, 500 for the second year, let's say 600 for the third year and say, another 600 for the fourth year. Okay. So these are like unequal, they're spread out different. Okay. 
Now, how do you calculate the payback period in this case? Now, in order to calculate the payback period for this case, you have to understand this term called as cumulative cash inflows. Okay, what do you mean by cumulative cash inflows? We as when we try to calculate payback period, we want to understand, you know, whether your cash outflow is equal to your cash inflow in which year, right? So we want to cumulatively know in which year, you know, this is going to happen, right? So let's look at the first year. What is the cumulative cash flow at the end of first year? That will be 400, right? What about the second year? Cumulative cash flow will be what cash flows we got in year one plus your year two. So that will be $400 plus your $500. So that makes it $900. Okay. What about year three? It will be $900 plus another 600. And what about year four? This will be $1,500 plus another 600. So as you can see here, in which year does this happen? Okay. So we wanted to recover $1,200 and we see that in year three, we have recouped or recovered almost all of it, right? So one thing is for sure in this case is that our payback period will lie somewhere between year two and year three, because on one side, we were able to recover only $900 by the end of year two, but we recovered more than $1,200 at the end of year three. So there has to be a point between which, you know, we get the exact payback period. So how do you calculate that is the key now. So for that, we need to understand, okay, there is one more term called as balance. Okay. What we understand by balance here is that how much amount is left to recover. Okay. So at the end of year one, we recovered, let's say $400. So how much is the balance left that is to be recovered in the future years? That will be 400 minus 1200. That will be $800. So that's what I'm trying to do now. Okay, so 400 and when, when we subtract 1200 from there, we get $800. Okay, now what about the same balance at the end of year two? At the end of year two, it will be 900 minus 1200. That will be $300. Okay, so $300 is still left to be recovered. What about at the end of year three? We have recovered not only the $300, but we have now additional cash inflows of $300 at the end of year three and year four, we have positive cash inflows cumulatively of $900. Okay. So obviously the point is between year two and year three and the balance will be useful for calculating the payback period now. So the payback period here will be obviously it is one year, two years and two plus some years. Okay. So I'm writing like this two years plus something. And what is that plus something is the calculation that we are going to do now. So at the end of year two, we have $300 as balance. And if you look at year three, the cash flow is $600. Okay. So assuming that the cash inflows happen throughout the year, how much time will you take to recover $300 from that? So if you look at the calculation, this will be $300 divided by 600, right? So it will take half a year to recover your investment of $300. Okay. So the fraction which we are talking about two years plus dash is nothing but 0.5. So this will be equal to 2.5 years. Okay. So the payback comes out to be like this in case of unequal cash flows. Now let us look at how payback period is used in capital budgeting. So basically payback period is used to compare multiple projects. Okay. So uh, let's say if you have two projects, project A and project B. So basically you will select the one which has a lower payback period. Okay. So select the one that has lower payback period. What does this imply? Now this implies that select the project which will give you your investments or return your investments at a faster pace. So say for example, if there is a project A, okay project A that has a payback period of let's say 10 years. Okay. And then there is project B that has a payback period of let's say three years. Okay. So which project should you select project A or project B? So 
obviously when you look at and compare between these two projects project b is a good one right but should you select it or not it depends on something like a benchmark uh, uh, period okay and it comes from the management so if management is expecting let's say that whatever project they invest into it should have a maximum payback period of let's say four years okay in that case this project b is a better option right because they expect any project which they invest in uh, to have not more than four years of payback period but project b has now even lesser than that so you will select project b right but in this case you'll actually reject project a but let's say if this benchmark payback period that comes from the management is just two years okay now in that case you will go ahead and reject both of them in that case you will obviously reject both of them because they both have a higher payback period than two years now let us look at the limitations of payback period in order to understand the limitations of payback period let's consider this project project a and project b okay now if we look at uh, the overall project both projects require twelve hundred dollars as initial investments and both of them generate um, you know around sixteen hundred dollars in the span of four years okay now which project will you choose according to payback period how much is the payback period for period i mean for project a that is if you look at project a this will be one two and three you will take three years to recover your initial investment okay so for project a it is three years okay how about project b project b will take three years again thousand hundred hundred this is twelve hundred so this is also three years okay now if you have to pick one of them intuitively think of which one will you pick okay will you pick project a or will you pick project b now if i were to select either of the two i would select project b and the reason is that there is this concept called as time value of money okay i hope you have uh, understood the concept of time value of money in previous lectures of our capital budgeting and if you haven't you can go ahead and look at this time value of money concept in very much detail in this video of ours however let's go back to this topic and see what is happening here now imagine in this project b you're getting thousand dollars in year one itself right now and in project a you are getting twelve hundred dollars at the end of third year okay so that value of twelve hundred dollars at the end of three years if you consider the present value of that twelve hundred dollars will be much much less because of inflation and other things as well however in project b you are able to recover a sizable amount of that twelve hundred in the initial first year itself so time has value and that's what i'm trying to tell you that payback period doesn't consider that as one of the options and a better approach is to actually look at discounted payback period another limitation of payback period is that it completely disregards the amount of cash inflows that were generated after the payback period so uh, to understand this let's look at these project a and project b and it will be quite clear after that so let's say there are two projects project a and project b and we have twelve hundred dollars as the initial investment now for both the projects as we can see here the project a has a payback period of three years and project b has a payback period of three years there's one critical difference between project a and project b is that project b continues for two more years year five and year six and it gives continuous cash inflows of four hundred dollars each in the two years now which project will you select according to payback period you know both of them are same right so would you select a or b according to payback it's kind of neutral but you intuitively know that this is generating more cash inflows so this becomes another limitation of payback period it completely disregards what happens after the payback period okay so this is one limitation so in order to solve this limitation you will have to use multiple capital budgeting techniques like the net present value or you can use internal rate of returns or uh, 
you know there are other ways in which you can also look at capital budgeting but payback period is generally not used in isolation it is used with net present value and irr to select the projects i hope you found this video to be useful please do like and share and if you have any feedback or want to suggest a topic for any future videos then you may do so by writing about it in the comment section also we come up with interesting videos on finance and accounting topics regularly so if you have not subscribed to our channel yet then please do so by clicking on the subscribe button so that you can get the notification as soon as we release the new video thanks for watching have a nice day